ladies. <laughs> I can see five of you already had a coffee. And the rest who are listening, I really recommend you join us later on in the hall, just across the hallway. I, our neighbors have the best espresso I have ever drank. And believe me, because I live really, really close to Italy, it is completely true. So if there's any gentleman that would like to join us as well, I'll be really happy to say again, hello ladies and gentlemen, this file, just good morning ladies. Now, I am, my name is Matej Rajk, I come from Slovenia, from a company called Messi. I hear that Messi means something really good in Finnish, so um, in, Finnish la in Finnish language. So I'll be glad to, to tell you some good stuff, I hope. What we do at Macy is we develop technology to improve ABI or ankle brachial index measurement uh, in order to bring it closer to, especially to, professional, to professionals in the healthcare. Uh, and ABI or ankle brachial index measurements are used for diagnosing of, uh, diagnosing of peripheral arterial disease. Let me first tell you what is this. Peripheral arterial disease, I'll just use the abbreviation PAD because it's easier to pronounce obviously, is uh, actually obstructive blood flow to lower extremities, so to your legs, due to uh, cholesterol, cholesterol buildup in your arteries. It is a little known fact that it's actually number three cause of death by cardiovascular reason in the world, right after coronary heart disease and stroke. And nevertheless, I don't know if you, even, if you have ever even, even heard of, them, of it. And what's ankle brachial index? It's really simple, it's just a ratio, so a mathematical equation between blood pressure in your legs and blood pressure in your arms. It is just a number, but it is crucial to tell the doctor whether this patient might or might not have peripheral arterial disease. Now let's move on first to who the ABI should be screened in. This is based on international, uh, internationally accepted guidelines for managing of PAD, which were public, published by Inter uh, continental inter-society for, for this disease. So first of all, all patients who have any kind of leg pain, so exertional leg, leg symptoms, should be measured regardless of the, their age. Second of all, and more importantly, all people between age of 50 and 70 who are in a cardiovascular risk factor, which is hypertension for instance, but more, more importantly, smoking or diabetes, those patients have three to four times more chance to, to get VAD than others, need to be screened. And everybody above age of 70 automatically falls into the risk group. So regardless of cardiovascular risk, uh, risk factor, they should be screened and they, their ABI should be measured. This means that all these people should be regularly measured for ankle brachial index at least once a year, no matter why they visit the doctor. Why is this so important? Because these this, uh, graphs that we see here show the mortality rate or the survival rate of the patients with, uh, with uh, developed per peripheral arterial disease. There's actually 10 to 15% mortality in the first five years from developing the disease, uh, which is actually quite high, but the number of the percentage of people with different other complications which are, which are not death is also, of course, much higher. Now, let me get on to some other numbers. They're going to get interesting, I promise you this. There's over 70% of the population that are 50 years of age or more are in the risk group for, for PAD, based on their cardiovascular risk factor or, or other factors. Now, 18% of the population of the, over 50 years would receive or would develop PAD. And only 10 to 35% of those people, so we say on average 25% of PAD patients, show early symptoms, which is usually pain in the leg. And this means that there's, in Finland, 1,700,000 people that would need screening, according to the international guidelines. 435,000 statistically would develop PAD, but only 130,000 would receive treatment because they would have early symptoms. This means there's 1,570,000 people in, only in Finland who might have PAD but they don't get the treatment because nobody's taking care of their ABI measurement. Because why and why is that so? I'm going to explain to you in the next slide. I, I think and also based on, on uh, let me say, uh, feedbacks from the doctors that we are cooperating with, we, there are all over 1,000 MESA devices already operating and around 10,000 competition devices in the world. 
So we get a lot of feedbacks and we see that the, uh, the basic problem is in the technology. The traditional technology for measuring ABI is the Doppler probe. I'm sure you heard about it. This has been in the market for decades actually. But the pro Doppler probe is completely inconvenient to use. It takes over 30 minutes to, to do the measurement. And that is without counting the 15 minutes obligatory resting period for the patient before he receives the, the measurement. It, is requ it requires a highly trained operator, which is usually a doctor, which means it's a, again inconvenient. Which doctor has 45 minutes just to conduct a screen? It's really hard to, ex to expect such a thing would happen. And last but not least, it is extremely prone to human error because the reading of the results is usually organoleptic. I mean, you, you see results or you hear the results, but nobody has 100% vision or 100% hearing, plus it is not easy to understand these, these uh, readings. Now, I have uh, quite fresh data from a university hospital in Almere in, in the Netherlands, where they told us that over 50% of ref referrals to the secondary level because of the potential PAD were wrong because the ABI measurement was not done correctly. Now, if you can imagine the cost of that and the lost time of those doctors who, did, who were there for just nothing, again, it is not a nice um, view, I would say. So, basically, nobody uses this for preventive screening Whereas, for massive screening of millions of people, because it's completely inconvenient. Now, here we come to the power of the technology of Macy. Well, our simple device was designed to reduce the complexity of measurements. So it does the full measurement in just two to three minutes, which, are we which we are going to demonstrate later on. Everybody can do it because it's so easy. Just place the cups, press the start-stop button, it's completely automatic, so the human error is excluded, and it is completely inexpensive. I mean, if we take for a, an average of 1,500 patients that the general practitioner would usually have in his file, it is less than two euros per person. So those medical guidelines that have been out for 10 years or more can finally start getting executed, and of course the million five hundred thousand and thirty thousand or 70,000 fins can be measured and see if they need any help in the first stages of the disease. Now, where's the magic about it? It's no rocket science, but the blood pressure in your legs cannot be measured the same way as blood pressure in your arms. First of all, in your ankles there are two main arteries, and in your brachial area there's only one. Secondly, if you touch your arm and touch your leg, you're going to see that the tissue is completely different. So this is actually state-of-the-art technology that we placed into this device. It was not easy to develop, but our, uh, our development managed to do a mathematical algorithm that does this really, really accurately. The other thing that is really, really important as well is this is the only dev device in the world that is automatic ABI uh, index measuring device that does the measurement completely simultaneously. This means that all three cups get inflated at the same time. We place two cups on the legs and one on the arm and deflate at the same time, so we get a capture of the ABI in exact moment of time. This is really important because everybody knows that if you do, for instance, two consecutive measurements of blood pressure on your arm with the same device, you will not get ex exactly the same reading. Now, if you have to do the measurement for 30 minutes on all extremities, the blood pressure drift in this time is significant, and that's why the accuracy is, so, is also impeded. Now, there's other 21st century gizmos that we believe should be self-understood in medical technology, but they are obviously not always, but still, it's really easy to use. You just got three cuffs and one button to start the, the, the measurement. Uh, it actually does two measurements at the same time, so you might as well just use it instead of a normal blood pressure meter as well, because it, it takes approximately the same time as an automatic blood pressure meter, but you get the ABI as well. It's got a color screen, so you can easily read the results. It's got a printout and a save op uh, filing option and all the, the things that, are, uh, that makes it easy to use. And last but not least, it's also really portable. It comes with a stand, so you can take it around, for instance, for hospital use. You can go and measure 20, 30 patients uh, just on one battery charge, and then you can download the results and file them and edit them in your electronic patient record. Now, 
What follows next is a demonstration of its usage because right now, so far I've been only talking and now I have to put my you know, money where my mouth is. So I'm going to invite my lovely assistant. Who just volunteered to be measured for her ankle brachial index? Um, and I'm going to ask you to put your boots off because they're probably high. No, it doesn't matter. Stockings are okay. AB, uh, uh, Messi ABPI works through any kind of thin clothing, so you can use it with stockings. You can use it with thin sweater like this. It's perfectly fine, but you will have to take the other one off as well. Because, yes, because it is measured in both legs. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to place the cuffs on our volunteer. Sorry, can I get your name, please? Mare. On Mare. Uh, I'm going to place the, the cuffs uh, on one of her arms and two of her legs. I'm going to press the start stop button. You're going to be able to see everything. And in the end, we're going to read the results. Now, um, as I told you, we have, we have three cups. Uh, they are color-coded, so they are not easily mistaken. Uh, but they also have written what they do. So this is the right ankle cuff. I'm going to ask you to help me just a little bit with raising your right leg. I'm going to be touching you a little bit, I'm sorry. But uh, pretend I'm a doctor. So, we just place the cuff. Really easy. One is done. We're going to do the second, actually we're doing like this, it's much easier. This is the yellow cuff for the left ankle. There you go. And the red cuff for your arm. I'm going to explain in a minute just why do we have just one arm cuff and two leg cuffs. Now you have to relax. During the measurement you have to be relaxed, so I'm going to ask you to put your left arm beside, beside your body as well. Just close your eyes and breathe normally and the, the measurement is going to be conducted. So I turned on the, the device. It needs just a couple of seconds to set up and press the start stop button. It's already in Suomi, so you can understand it if you don't speak English here. Now why do we have one arm cuff? It is because the measurement is simultaneous uh, we want to get, of course, a, a, as quick as possible the, the accurate results. So we need both legs to be measured, but only 5% of people have different uh, blood pressures in different arms, and their blood, general practitioners usually know that so if, if that would be necessary, they can just switch the cuffs. But because this is completely simultaneously, three extremities get uh, blocked, the, the blood flow get, get, gets blocked at the same time, so you need to leave one limb open to prevent a little Little, there's a little chance, but it's a dangerous chance of a cardiac overload. Well, in the meantime, while we're doing the measurement, I'm going to just tell you a little bit about the, area, about the areas of use, so you can imagine where this could be used. First of all, we believe, and this is actually really happening right now, especially in Europe, general practice, practitioners in five years, everybody is going to have such a device, and they're going to perform the screening. Why? Because I told you about the numbers and the extensiveness of this, this disease. The social costs, so healthcare systems costs of this disease are enormous. And treating this disease in the early stages is actually almost free of charge. If you're borderline, you just need to change your lifestyle, quit smoking, start walking and so on. The second thing, diabetes clinics or diabetes uh, healthcare. Diabetic patients have three to four times higher chance to develop peripheral arterial disease and it's responsible towards them that they, they get this treatment and they get uh, warned about their possible condition. And then there are some other, some other uh, fields as well. Tool is going to remove the cuffs, the, the measurement was already done in this time and also the calculation was done. So Mare is completely healthy, which is uh, considering her age and fitness status, pretty normal. But if she was maybe 63 or 67 and a smoker, there would be quite a high chance, so one in a five statistically, that she would be a borderline or a critical condition. Your indexes are 1.37 and 1.28. Anywhere, and this is the next slide that I'm going to show you, this is the reference scale. So anywhere between 1.0 and 1.4, the ABI is normal. This is, this is a dynamic range. It doesn't have to be fixed. More than, you know, like 1.4 is, is not better than 1.0. But it has to be in this 
somewhere in this range to be normal. And yours are completely normal, so congratulations. If you have uh, ABI of 1.4 or more, it usually means that your arteries and your legs are not contractible, so they have calcination. You, you would probably, I mean, if the general practitioner would discover such a condition, he would probably prescribe secondary level examination to get this uh, condition examined thoroughly. Borderline condition is between 0.9 and 1.0. In this borderline field, there are, there are different practices around the world, but usually the, the patient does not require treatment, but requires reconsi reconsideration of his lifestyle. So quit smoking, start walking, all these healthy things which are the cheapest to do. Uh, and below 0.9, it is a critical already, and again, if the general practitioner would face such a condition, he would refer this patient to the secondary level of the specialist where the condition would be examined further on. Now, from my side, this was pretty much it. I'm, I'm really happy that I'm here, that I'm here uh, in Finland. I love it so far, even though I, I can't see around uh, the countryside yet. But I, I, there's a free day on Saturday, so I'm gonna go try to find myself a view. But here's my message to you before I finish. Do good for the Finnish people, use Messi, and save 430,000 Finns from dying. And please visit us at our booth. Uh, don't hesitate to ask any questions. We're just going across the hall. Visit, visit turvaistechnica.fi and messimedical.com. And thank you again for your patience with me at this presentation.